It's sad but true, there are plenty of great games that didn't sell well. Let's pour one out for these awesome games that flopped hard. Kingdoms of Armala Reckoning Kingdoms of Armala Reckoning should have done well. Fantasy writer R.A. Salvatore created the story and Todd McFarlane provided the art direction. In all, Armala featured a huge world with over 200 hours of quests. Unfortunately, those 200 hours went unplayed. The game only sold 1.2 million copies after three months. That might sound good, but it was considered a failure since Armala needed to sell 3 million to break even. Soon after, developer 38 Studios filed for bankruptcy, killing any chance at a follow-up. Earthbound Earthbound is a legend among Nintendo fans, but most people didn't actually play it when it was released in the 90s. Known in Japan as Mother 2, the game only sold about 140,000 units in the United States, about half of what it sold in Japan in 1994. Some think its graphics were the problem since they were pretty simplistic. Others blame its low sales on bad marketing. Either way, modern gamers came to appreciate the weirdness of Earthbound, and the franchise got a Japanese sequel in 2006, a virtual console port in 2013, and of course, it was also included on the SNES Classic. Beyond Good and Evil Beyond Good and Evil is a cult classic. It earned great reviews and was critically acclaimed for its visuals, storytelling, and cast. But it suffered poor sales during its 2003 release. Why? Some think it was because it was overshadowed by big titles released the same year, like the original Call of Duty or Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. A remastered HD version was released in 2011 for the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Arcade. Meanwhile, even though a sequel was announced back in 2008, ten years later the game has yet to materialize beyond trailers. Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars on the Nintendo DS featured a top-down adventure that harkened back to the GTA games of old, allowing players to cause mayhem with the triads of Liberty City. Despite being part of one of the most successful franchises in gaming, Chinatown Wars sold under 90,000 units in its first two weeks in America, making it a commercial dud despite being amazing. Maybe it was the fact that the DS was thought to be too kid-friendly, but really, the Grand Theft Auto series is anything but. Jet Grind Radio If you had a Sega Dreamcast, you probably played Jet Grind Radio. Too bad most people didn't have a Sega Dreamcast. The game let players rollerblade through the city while performing tricks and spraying graffiti tags on as many surfaces as possible. Despite its low sales, Jet Grind Radio spawned a sequel and a few HD remakes. At the very least, the Dreamcast classic managed to tag the hearts of players around the world. Valkyria Chronicles There are few games as pretty and as addictive as Valkyria Chronicles for the PlayStation 3. This strategy role-playing game had great visuals, memorable characters and a wartime backdrop that hooked players. Its sketchbook-style aesthetic brought a classic old-world feel to the game, which was loosely based on pre-World War II Europe. Despite its positive reviews, Valkyria Chronicles didn't have stellar sales numbers. It saw a sales boost after a price cut, but it was never considered a commercial success. Luckily, its PC port sold very well on Steam, moving about 650,000 copies within its first five months. Max Payne 2 – The Fall of Max Payne the first Max Payne game was enough of a hit to warrant a sequel, and the second installment earned great reviews. But for whatever reason, Max Payne 2 The Fall of Max Payne sold terribly. It might as well have been called Max Payne 2 The Fall of Take-Two Interactive's earning forecasts. The poor performance at retail might have made the process of getting Max Payne 3 greenlit that much harder. Fortunately, the third game in the series managed to right the ship, selling 4 million copies in its first year. That's almost enough to forget about the Max Payne movie starring Mark Wahlberg. Almost.